Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to talk about the best current web browser. Is it LibreWolf? Now, this has been a browser that's been out for a little while. I've actually talked about it a few times. The reason I wasn't bringing it up a whole lot is because it was very difficult to get working. It's not generally in repositories yet. A few distros have put it in. Of course, if you are on Arch, it has been in the um, Arch user repository as well. So that is actually good. And there is now a deb for Debian Unstable. So if you're running anything based on Debian, and unstable, you can also run it by either using the deb package or adding the repository manually. Warning, do not try that on Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or anything based on current uh, stable Debian. The reason there's some dependencies that are not yet resolved, and that is what is keeping it out of many repositories right now. However, the latest updates are you can now get it on Flathub and they have Windows executables and they have Mac DMGs. And so now LibreWolf is moving into a place where it looks as though it's going to be the next great web browser contender. Let's talk about why. Firefox is the only true huge open source browser left. Unfortunately, they've been doing some weird stuff with it, but because it is a FOSS application, it can be forked. Unfortunately, many groups have forked it and not updated it, and you're left with old things that are just so legacy they won't work on several different websites. You have Waterfox, which was purchased by System One, and that immediately compromises Waterfox, so I would not recommend using that at all. But LibreWolf is being regularly updated. It has the latest Firefox core, at least within one or two versions back. This uh, version I have is at least based on 91, but I also haven't updated my, uh, my production computer for a couple weeks. And so it might have updated itself again uh, since then. That being said, let's go ahead and walk through LibreWolf and what it is and why it is good. Well, it is basically Firefox without all of the crazy things they're doing. So when you go into it, so this is LibreWolf-community.gitlab.io. You can grab all the source code from GitLab. There's documentation and there is an installation tab. They have no telemetry, no experiments. This is the thing that I hate about Firefox. They're just randomly rolling people into experiments, opted on. Now you can opt out of that in the settings, but it is enabled by default. They're not going to be running experiments on you. They're not going to be doing adware annoyances like pop up, pick your color wheel. That's the latest on Firefox 94. Uh, no, just update and get out of my face, all right? Um, or unnecessary distractions, like color wheels, I guess. I don't know. Uh, the private search. So it has changed the search options from Google and other paid ones to DuckDuckGo, Cirex, Quant, a few more. And I believe DuckDuckGo is their default out of the box. They are using uBlock Origin out of the box on default. So it is already set up and configured uh, when you boot it up. Um, they have enhanced security, extension firewall, and other security improvements are included without sacrificing usability. It is always built from the latest Firefox stable source, so it is up to date for security and uh, features along with stability. So it is going to be a telemetry-free Firefox. And open source, of course. They have GitLab, Element.io, and uh, Gitter. Uh, as communities so you can jump in over there now under the installation this is what has left uh, kept me from seriously recommending it in the past is that it just was not in many repositories now in arch it is in the AUR and so yay as LibreWolf will get it installed or LibreWolf bin, whichever you would prefer to do. Now, Debian base, this is where they are talking about the repository is available for Debian Unstable, which also has a .deb file for Debian Unstable. They do have a note here don't try to use it on stable branch of Debian or anything based on it, like Ubuntu, Mint, or therefore derivatives. 
But uh, with those, there are other options. Uh, Gen 2, it is in the repository. <laughs> Who didn't see that one coming? They have an app image, so you can grab the app image. And many, many distributions will run the app image just fine. Flatpak, for a while it was not in Flathub. It is now in Flathub. So pretty much any distribution that has Flatpaks enabled by default will generally include Flathub being a, uh, a very safe and secure repository for Flatpaks. This is the default on Linux Mint. Uh, default on Fedora and many other platforms as well. So now, anytime you boot up your Flatpak repositories, you will be able to find LibreWolf on there. I am personally running this on the Flatpak. In fact, the screen that you see over here where we're looking at, this is me running the Flatpak of LibreWolf on Linux Mint. You can compile it from source, and as well, you can go ahead and grab the, um, you can just go ahead and grab the files and put them in a folder and manually create a desktop uh, icon if you want to do that. That is an option. For you running Mac and Windows, they do have a DMG releases page and Windows now has a setup.exe file as well. So over here you can grab the DMG for your Mac and you can grab your uh, setup for here. And note, I mean, the Firefox 94 is very new, and now LibreWolf is based on 94. So it is very up-to-date, very good. They block all the telemetry. Also, they remove the pocket button uh, by default. They remove the experiments, the pocket, the Firefox suggest. All that stuff is gone. It's gone. LibreWolf did a great job of removing that. So if you are uh, stuck looking for whatever the browser is that you think you might want to be using, definitely have a look at LibreWolf, Flatpaks, App Images, and a few distributions have it in their repository. On my Arch computer, I'm running it from the AUR. And on my Linux Mint computer, I'm running it on the Flatpak version. Now, in the past, on my old Linux Mint build, I had issues with OBS not picking up... Um, LibreWolf that has since been resolved um, on the new system and so now I'm actually able to use LibreWolf as the browser that I use on OBS. So that is definitely the one and also Linux, Mac, and Windows. Go ahead and switch to LibreWolf if you're looking for something. Now here's another factor I'm going to mention though before you jump over to it right away. I love this because it doesn't have all these external things. Some of you guys really like the creating an account and syncing all your bookmarks. It doesn't have those features. I know when Linux Experiment just did his recent video about switching web browsers, that was one of the things he looked at. That was one of his considering considerations, so he probably would not want to use this one. But me, I always think that's a security issue. You can easily... Easily, easily make a backup of your bookmarks and deploy that bookmark list. If you need to cross-sync everything all the time, I don't know. I I personally have issues with that. I think that you're giving you're again giving too much information to other people to manage. But if that's you, that's you. So if that is you, LibreWolf is not going to be for you. Um, but I do not like those features. I don't want the features to be there. And that is another reason why I love this particular browser. So there is my thought on LibreWolf. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.